Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for Sunday Evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord who is good, whose mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Tonight's hymn is arguably one of the finest from Congregational Praise, the hymn Lord of Good Life. The hymn is sung by the choir of St Andrews with Castlegate United Reformed Church in Nottingham from this morning's worship. psalm is psalm 96 sing to the lord a new song sing to the lord all the earth sing to the lord and bless the lord's name proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day declare the glory of the lord among the nations and the wonders of the lord among all peoples for great is the lord and greatly to be praised more to be feared than all gods. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord who is coming, who is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. 
Our Old Testament reading from Hosea, chapter 5, beginning at verse 8. Blow the horn in Gibeah, the trumpet in Ramah, sound the alarm at Beth-Avon, look behind you, Benjamin. Ephraim shall become a desolation on the day of punishment. Among the tribes of Israel, I declare what is sure. The princes of Judah have become like those who remove the landmark. On them I will pour out my wrath like water. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment, because he was determined to go after vanity. Therefore, I am like maggots to Ephraim and like rottenness to the house of Judah. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to the great king. But he is not able to cure you or heal your wound, for I will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I myself will tear and go away. I will carry off and no one shall rescue. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favour. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O what shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament song from 1 Chronicles 29, a song of David. Blessed are you, O God of Israel, for ever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. True wealth and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our Gospel reading from St Matthew 14, the first 12 verses. At that time... Herod the ruler heard reports about Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has raised, been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. For Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put him to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised an oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, 
Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought on a platter and given to the girl who brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a strong and serious warning in the story of Herod tonight. For on the one hand, if and when we make a promise, most if not all of us would see shame and regret and dishonour in breaking that promise. Yet on the other hand, as we see the corner that Herod is manoeuvred into, when the promise he has to keep, that is, to grant the daughter of Herodias whatever she asks for, then there is surely in us, the reader, the wish that this promise be broken. And so we see the king in a fix and verse 9 surely is a place that from time to time most of us find ourselves. The king was grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he commanded it to be given. There are times, there are occasions, when we stand in a place where the expectation is that we will keep our word. And the worry of being true to that word is significant, compelling, and we step out ready to do so. However, there is also mixed in Herod's assessment of the situation, a regard for the guests. Read that for you and for me. The simple line, what do other people think of me? Will they still like me? Will they still trust me? Will they still be my friends and my associates if I do such a thing or if I don't do such a thing? Peer pressure. A very serious pressure of wanting to do, yes, what keeps us in good relationship with others. And so Herod is backed into a corner and does what is clearly for us, the reader, the dishonourable thing. He martyrs for us, one of Christ's company, John the Baptist. But forget the name, forget the fact he is now a saint in the company of those to whom churches and cathedrals are dedicated. His name could have been anybody's name. He is the casualty, the consequence of the muddle and mess that Herod has got himself into. For when you and I weigh up whether we should keep a promise or whether now that needs to be revised, when we worry about what others might make of us and whether they will still be our friends and trust us. Beware that there isn't somebody like John the Baptist, please God, not their life, but their reputation and their situation, thwarted, destroyed, affected by us. God spare us from being like Herod and God spare us from becoming like Herodias who is the one who trapped and created this story by wanting her will done and getting it done third party through her daughter and her husband. Amen. On Sundays 
the New Testament song is always the Magnificat. And a number of us have grown to really treasure Phil Nevard, URC minister in South Western Synod, his singing of the setting of the Magnificat in our Rejoice and Sing hymn book. Walford Davies setting of the Magnificat. We listen. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Let us pray. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we who have this day given thanks for his resurrection. Praise him in the eternal city in which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, reigning in glory. Cloud and deep darkness proclaim your holiness. Radiant light shows forth your truth. Jesus has entered the cloud of your presence. He has taken his seat at the right hand of majesty. Perfect sacrifice, he has put away our sins. Merciful high priest, he pleads for our weakness. Always our brother, he prepares our place in heaven. Ruler of all, he establishes your reign. Dawning light for the righteous, hope of sinners. Blessed are you, sovereign God, high over all. Amen. As evening falls, we bring to God the needs of all the world. For all Christians, that we may preach the reign of God in word and deed that our promises and pledges made to God might be mixed with a commitment to the flourishing of every John the Baptist, a willingness to listen to every prophet, and when it is our turn to do so, to speak the voice of John and Hosea, and for courage to do so. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations, that the peace of God may dispel the rumblings of war. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For our communities, that our lives may be marked by the spirit of conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who suffer, that the resurrection of Christ may be their hope. We continue to pray with Celia for Alfie and for his mum in this time of isolation following surgery and as he undergoes chemotherapy. With Andy for Karen and Liz. With Tony in his recovery from chemotherapy. For the Reverend Michael Pevy and June, his wife, and for Tom and Bonnie, we pray for Teddy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all who live under the threat, the worry and the anxiety associated with COVID-19. For those who work in care homes and in hospitals and in places of testing. Let us pray for our schools, colleges and universities. For staff under immense pressure and strain to sustain any semblance of normality. For students, particularly those in their first days of university. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed, that theirs now may be light, refreshment and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all mercy, hear our evening prayer. Bring us safely through this night, that we may give you praise with the coming of the dawn. We ask this through Christ. The word made flesh. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Our prayers began with Christ be our light improvisation on that beautiful hymn by Art van der Gronden in the Festingkerk in Helvetslaus. We conclude with his organ voluntary as played in this morning's live stream worship from Festingkerk. Thank you Art for your music as ever. <laughs> 